Good afternoon. My name is Stéphane Boissel. I'm the CEO of uh, Tixel. And uh, if you want to read this very long introduction, be my guest. But let's move to the core of the presentation. So basically, Tixel is a French company. It's um, a cellular immunotherapy company. And basically what we do is that we are using uh, what uh, you all know very well, which is a CAR technology, but instead of uh, inserting this CAR into uh, T effector cells to fight cancer or infectious disease, we insert those CAR into regulatory T cells. And regulatory T cells have a natural property to uh, control uh, the immune system, to downregulate the immune system. Uh, and so very uh, naturally, we are using those uh, CAR TREG uh, to fight uh, autoimmunity, uh, inflammatory disorders, as well as uh, transplantation-related disorders. Uh, we believe to be uh, the only company in the world today to, to be focusing on, on CAR TREG. Uh, it's not a proven technology. Uh, we are expecting to be uh, starting a first in man study sometimes next year, and if we reach that uh, objective, uh, that will be uh, a first ever. I mean, T regs have been tested in clinics for, for years now, but uh, most of the uh, clinical trials have been uh, conducted with what we call polyclonal T regs, so non specific T regs. And actually, there was only uh, one clinical trial conducted with antigen specific T regs. It was uh, a product that was developed by Tixel with a, a previous uh, generation of product, uh, which were naturally antigen-specific uh, products. So again, uh, we are expecting to be starting uh, what has never been done in the past, i.e. a first-in-man study with a car egg sometimes next year. Uh, we are at the crossroads of uh, two very exciting fields, uh, cellular immunotherapy, needless to, for me to introduce this, uh, with the recent acquisition of carried by Gilead and, uh, importantly, the FDA approval of uh, the CTL-19 from Novartis. Uh, but uh, less known is uh, the, the field of regulatory T cells. Those cells were discovered in the, in the, in the mid-90s, so uh, quite recently. And for the first 20 years, the, the pharma has not really looked into uh, uh, regulatory T cells technology. And since the beginning of 2017, we've seen uh, five deals five pharma or biotech deals in this field, uh, one by uh, Celgin, one by Novartis, one by Servier, and two by uh, Eli Lilly. And those uh, deals were uh, on, on uh, in vivo uh, uh, technology, I mean technology that expands regulatory T cells in vivo, and, and we do uh, ex vivo uh, expansion and targeting of, uh, of TREG. And, and, and again, this is why we are saying that we are really at the crossroad of two exciting fields. On one hand, cellular immunotherapy, and on the other hand, the uh, therapeutic use of uh, TREGs. Uh, in this slide, you can see that uh, uh, potentially our technology, we are a platform you know, company, can be applied to uh, many different uh, um, you know, diseases. Uh, we are talking about more than 100 different diseases, and, and we've, uh, as we all well know, a very large uh, market uh, opportunity, unfortunately, for patients, this uh, market opportunity is growing uh, every year, uh, very rapidly. And we are talking about uh, a, a range of diseases such as multiple sclerosis, uh, such as Crohn's disease, such as uh, lupus, for example. So basically, uh, the first uh, 10 years um, plus of uh, tick cells were focused, as I was uh, already uh, I mean, saying earlier, on a first generation of product uh, in which the antigen specificity was uh, natural, and that was really the initial discovery of the firm. Uh, two years ago, we had some uh, uh, manufacturing issue. We realized that uh, this technology was not scalable from a manufacturing viewpoint, so we've decided to move the scientific focus to a new generation of product in which, uh, as I was saying, the uh, antigen specificity is uh, introduced uh, uh, via the transduction of a car into the, the, the TREG. Uh, over the last uh, 18 months, we've uh, managed to uh, demonstrate that uh, we can, uh, I mean, it works. We know how to uh, do a CAR TREG. We know how to characterize in vitro uh, a CAR, uh, CAR TREG, excuse me, and, and optimize this product. And we know uh, that uh, it does uh, something good to uh, mice. We have yet, as I was saying, to test it in clinic, something that we should do uh, starting next year. 
And we believe that this technology compared to the initial technology has a, has a broader therapeutic potential. And we also believe, uh, and this is a good uh, argument uh, for us to continue uh, the effort on that domain compared to the initial focus, that uh, this technology will be much more appealing to both investors and the pharma community. Basically, uh, you have on this uh, slide what is a CAR-T reg, and if you are familiar, and I'm sure you are all familiar with a CAR-T, you see on the left-hand side that uh, the picture is exactly the same as uh, uh, the picture you can expect from, a, from a, uh, someone presenting a CAR-T in, uh, in oncology, uh, with two main differences. Excuse me, I have a cold. <coughs> the first one is that we don't work on T-effector cells, but we work on regulatory T-cells, so the car that we introduce is not on, the, on a normal T-cell, so to speak. And the second uh, difference will be that the antigen that we are going to target <coughs> excuse me, are not uh, um, uh, cancer antigen. And, and by the way, they don't need to be uh, specific to a disease. They need to be specific or, or, or selectively present in the tissue where there is inflammation we will want to fight. Uh, on the right-hand side of the slide, you see that we inject those CAR-T uh, IV, and thanks to the natural property of the Treg, the CAR Treg will migrate very specifically to the site of inflammation. And this has nothing to do with the CAR; it's really uh, due to the natural property of the Treg. And uh, when they will encounter the uh, antigen uh, 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 that binds to the CAR, they will uh, activate and expand uh, in vivo. This is today an autologous technology, <coughs> and we have a manufacturing process which is very similar to the manufacturing process of a CAR-T. Uh, we have um, 21 days uh, before QC uh, to manufacture from 1 million cells as a starting material, which is a very low count compared to T-effector cells, to manufacture up to 200 uh, million car -T eggs. I mean, T-Rex, and then, uh, uh, of course, car t um, And we, uh, uh, we believe that we will have probably to add like a week of QC. So vein to vein, you are talking about a manufacturing process, which is uh, uh, 30 days or less if we need to expand uh, less uh, cells. And today, we don't really know, but we expect that we will be injecting uh, in the region of 10 to the 6, or maybe two or three times 10 to the 6 cells per injection. So, of course, depending on the number of injections, uh, we won't need uh, uh, um, as much as 200 million uh, cells. We are not uh, involved in manufacturing anymore. We use uh, CMOs, and we use uh, one CMO for the GMP manufacturing of the lantiviral vector. We've selected lantiviral vector at least for the first product because this is uh, obviously a technology that is uh, proven in, in clinic and well accepted by the uh, regulatory authorities. And we also use obviously a manufacturing CMO uh, for, I mean a CMO, excuse me, for the manufacturing of the, of the, of the cells. Uh, the manufacturing process is a 12-step uh, uh, process and again it compares uh, uh, well with the, um, you know, the classical CAR-T manufacturing process. I'm going to speak very rapidly about the various programs we have. The, the first uh, program we have uh, is targeting HLA-2, which is a common uh, mismatch uh, antigen in transplantation. Uh, this program has been selected because this is a program for which we have the, the most, uh, let's say, robust proof of concept today in, in clinically relevant mice model. And it's also a good model to test for the first time uh, such a technology in, in humans since we believe that the bar in terms of uh, uh, safety will be probably lower than if we were to select uh, a, a chronic disease such as, for example, Crohn or, or, or multiple sclerosis. And, and again, this technology has never been tested in clinic and uh, uh, we will go into clinical development with a very limited uh, safety Uh, data set. So we have to select, uh, uh, um, we had to select uh, uh, an indication for which the bar uh, from the uh, regulatory viewpoint will be probably lower than uh, with uh, any of the other diseases that I've mentioned to you before. So basically what we are going to do is that we are going to target in the case of mismatch antigen, um, Uh, the, uh, the, 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 we are going to try to prevent the chronic rejection of uh, solid organ transplantation. In the case of uh, uh, this chart, we are talking about uh, 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 a lung could, or kidney. Uh, uh, and the idea for us is to position the product uh, once the, uh, um, the, the transplanted patient 
uh, appears to be at risk of uh, chronically uh, rejecting the, the, the rejecting excuse me the graft of the lung in the in the in the short term and we are going to look at uh, uh, two things uh, uh, first can we uh, uh, control the induction and proliferation of uh, pro-inflammatory T cells T cells excuse me and on the second outcome obviously uh, which will be a key outcome to see whether we have a disease modifying technology is whether we can induce uh, tolerance with the uh, injection of CAR T lines. Uh, very rapidly, these were the initial data on which we are basing the development of this CAR T but uh, there is a publication, very nice publication by our collaborator, University of British Columbia in Vancouver in uh, GCI uh, in 2016 that is showing a very, uh, uh, that was on a GVHD model, a very uh, clear difference in terms of survival in between mice receiving a CAR reg targeting HLA2 versus uh, mice receiving no treatment and mice receiving a CAR uh, directed to an ir irrelevant CAR, uh, which is, uh, uh, excuse me, irrelevant antigen, which is the equivalent of a, of a polyclonal uh, uh, TREG. Uh, since then, uh, those data have been uh, uh, further um, let's say, complemented by uh, uh, similar data, <coughs> excuse me, with a humanized version, humanized version of the car -reg. And we can also mention that two other groups, uh, academic groups in Europe, one in London and one in uh, Hanover in Germany, have been demonstrating the same kind of effect in different uh, models. It was in the skin uh, model. But to say, uh, or to conclude on this slide, uh, there is now a growing uh, body of evidence that uh, targeting HLA2 with, uh, with a CAR T-reg in transplantation makes a lot of uh, clinical sense. I can uh, skip this one. Uh, well, yeah, no, just to say that we've, uh, we've communicated uh, earlier this week, uh, I mean, excuse me, earlier last week in the European Society of uh, Organ Transplantation Congress in Barcelona, uh, the data with the uh, humanized version of the SCFV for the CAR TREG targeting HLA2, as I was mentioning before, and, and that obviously was a very important milestone for us because this is a clinical, I mean, this is a candidate that we will use for uh, clinical development. We have other programs. Uh, actually, we have uh, seven or eight uh, other programs today. Uh, these are just uh, examples of uh, the disease we are targeting. Uh, the next in line is probably the, 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 the CAR T uh, that we develop in multiple sclerosis, for which we start to accumulate some uh, very interesting evidence that uh, uh, both uh, on, the, uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the disease itself, but also in terms of uh, biodistribution of the CAR uh, very selectively in the brain. In terms of uh, outlook uh, over the next few months, uh, we expect to be communicating additional proof of concept data. Uh, we uh, have decided to focus on four to five uh, programs for which uh, we have the best uh, chances of uh, going fast to clinical development. Uh, depending on the uh, availability of resources, which today is scarce, uh, we expect to be uh, starting to transfer to a, a cell manufacturing CMO by the end of the year for the HLA2 CAR uh, TREG program. Uh, this is if we want to be on time with the initiation of the first clinical trial. And we are going to continue the dialogue with uh, industry players uh, in view of entering into strategic partnership in the uh, future. And of course, we need to find money. And this is my last slide, just to uh, illustrate the fact that uh, ultimately, uh, in the short term, our goal is to reach clinical proof of concept by 2020 with the uh, CAR T-REG targeting HLA2. But we are going to design this trial so that uh, we validate not only this program in transplantation, but the whole platform uh, of uh, using CAR T-REG to address uh, this kind of uh, disease. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, I'm not going to go into all the secrets we have, but you, you have to understand that there are, uh, if you take the FOXP3 positive TREG, which are the most uh, described uh, TREG, you have like 10 different subtypes. And uh, uh, we, we, are, we, we don't know yet whether we are going to focus on one single cell type. I think it will depend on the, 
on, for example, the disease. Uh, but for the first one, for example, we've selected the, uh, the, the subtype of TREC that can, can be well characterized in manufacturing and which had uh, uh, shown the most persistence. Any other question? Thank you.